Welcome to the introduction to systems of ordinary differential equations. Often we do not have just one dependent variable and one equation. As we will see, we may end up with systems of several equations and several dependent variables, even if we start with a single equation. If we have several dependent variables, suppose y1 comma y2 all the way through yn, then we have a differential equation involving all of them and the derivatives with respect to one independent variable x. For example, y1 double prime equals f of y1 prime comma y2 prime comma y1 comma y2 comma x. This indicates y1 double prime is expressed as a function of the variables y1, y2, and their first derivatives, as well as the independent variable x. Usually when we have two dependent variables, we have two equations as shown below for some functions f1 and f2. We call the above a system of differential equations. More precisely, the above is a second order system of ODEs as second order derivatives appear. The system shown below is a first order system where x1, x2, and x3 are the dependent variables and t is the independent variable. The terminology for systems is essentially the same as for single equations. For the system above, a solution is a set of three functions, x1 of t comma x2 of t comma x3 of t, such that the three functions satisfy the three differential equations. We usually also have an initial condition. Just like for single equations, we specify x1 comma x2 comma and x3 for some fixed t. For example, x1 of zero equals a1, x2 of zero equals a2, x3 of zero equals a3, for some constants a1, a2, and a3. For the second order system, we would also specify the first derivatives at a point. And if we have a solution with constants in it, where by solving for the constants we find a solution for any initial condition, we call this solution the general solution. Let's look at an example. Let's consider the system y1 prime equals y1 and y2 prime equals y1 minus y2, with y1 and y2 as dependent variables and x as the independent variable. Let's also consider the initial conditions, y1 of zero equals one, and y2 of zero equals two. Looking at the equations, we can solve the first equation for y1 using separation of variables. We can write the equation as one divided by y1 dy1 equals dx. Integrating both sides, we have natural log y1 equals x plus c. Exponentiating both sides with a base of e, we have e raised to the power of natural log y1 equals e to the power of x plus c. Simplifying, we have y1 equals e to the x times e to the c, and let's call the constant e to the c, c sub one. This gives us y1 equals c1 e to the x. This is the general solution for the first equation. And now we plug y1 into the second equation, and we get the equation y2 prime equals, instead of y1, we have c1 e to the x minus y2 which is a linear first order equation that we can solve using the method of an integrating factor, which I've shown below. The first step is to add y2 to both sides of the equation. In this form, p of x is equal to one, the coefficient of y2, and therefore the integrating factor r of x is equal to e to the power of the integral of one dx, giving us r of x equals e to the x. Next, we multiply both sides of the equation by e to the x. When doing this, the left side is now equal to the derivative of the integrating factor and the variable y2. Also notice on the right side, e to the x times c1 times e to the x is equal to c1 e to the 2x. The next step is to integrate both sides of the equation, which is shown here on the far right in blue. Simplifying on the left, the integral undoes a derivative, and we're left with e to the x y2. On the right, we perform u substitution, where u is equal to 2x giving us c sub one divided by two e to the two x plus the constant c two. And the last step is to multiply both sides by e to the negative x to solve for y two, which gives us y two equals c one divided by two e to the x plus c two e to the negative x. This is the general solution for the second equation. And now we solve for c one and c two given the initial conditions. The first initial condition was y one of zero equals one so using our solution y1 equals c1 e to the x, we substitute zero for x and set the function value equal to one, which I've shown here below in blue. This gives us c1 e to the zero equals one, giving us c1 equals one. 
Because C1 is equal to 1, we now know y1 is equal to e to the x. We also know y2 is equal to 1 half e to the x plus C2 e to the negative x. And now we use a second initial condition to find C2. Using y2 of zero equals two, we substitute zero for x in y2 and set the function value equal to two. Again, I've shown this below in blue. This gives us one half e to the zero plus c2 e to the zero equals two. Solving for c2, we have c2 equals three halves. So now we know y1 equals e to the x and y2 equals one half e to the x plus three halves e to the negative x. This is the solution to the system of equations with the given initial conditions. Generally, we were not so lucky to be able to solve for each variable separately, as in our example, and we will have to solve for all variables at once. While we won't generally be able to solve for one variable and then the next, we will try to salvage as much as possible from this technique. It will turn out that in a certain sense, we will still try to solve a bunch of single equations and put these solutions together. We will mostly consider linear systems. The example above is a linear first order system. It is linear as none of the dependent variables or their derivatives appear in nonlinear functions or with powers higher than one. X, Y, X prime, and Y prime constants and functions of t can appear, but not x times y, or the square of y prime, or x cubed. Another more complicated example of a linear system is shown below. I hope you found this introduction helpful.